The Defense of Duffer's Drift by Captain E. D. Swinton, DSO, R.E. Later, Major General Sir Ernest Swinton, KBE, CB, DSO. Originally published in the U.S. in Infantry Journal, now Army, April 1905. Army Flashcards Edition, published January 2020. A classic in small unit tactics in the British and U.S. Army, this book is recommended without qualification for the modern professional soldier. What what did you do? Lieutenant Backsight Forethought, BF to his friends, has been left in command of a 50-man reinforced platoon to hold Duffer's Drift, the only ford on the Silius Vogel River available to wield traffic. Here is his chance for fame and glory. He's passed his officer courses and special qualifications. Quote, now, if they'd only given me a job like fighting the Battle of Waterloo or Bull Run, I knew all about that as I had crammed it up. End quote. While BF's tasks appear simple enough, the Boer army causes a multitude of problems, but you, astute reader, with a sharp mind and quick intellect, will no doubt solve the problem before the first shot is fired. This version of Duffer's Drift is published by Army Flashcards. Army Flashcards produces premier military educational material. In this edition, the lessons of Duffer's Drift are related to the present-day experiences of the American soldier and officer. About the M.G. Swinton Major General Sir Ernest D. Swinton, KBE, CB, DSO, was a noted English soldier, author, and professor. Considered by Field Marshal Earl Wavell as one of the most far-sighted officers the British Army has ever produced, he wrote before World War I on the effects of air warfare, mining, and of psychological warfare. In 1914, Sir Swinton completely revolutionized warfare by his invention of the tank. He, more than anyone else, was responsible for its introduction and development. He served as Professor of Military History at Oxford from 1925 to 1939, and later as Commandant of the Royal Tank Corps from 1934 to 1938, earning the rank of Major General. As a captain, shortly after service in the Boer War, he wrote The Defense of Duffer's Drift, using the pseudonym Lieutenant Backsight Forethought, or BF. Duffer's Drift has since become a military classic on minor tactics in this century. In addition to Duffer's Drift, and contributing to many journals, he authored The Green Curve in 1909 and The Great Tap Dope in 1915, under the pseudonym Ole Lukoli, or Olaf Shaddai. His other works include The Study of War in 1926 and his final publication, An Eastern Odyssey, written in 1935. Background on the Boer War, 1899-1902 The Boers, Dutch for farmer, first settled what is now Cape Province, Republic of South Africa, in 1652. After Great Britain annexed this territory in 1806, many of the Boers departed on the Great Trek and created the Republic of Natal, the Orange Free State, and Transvaal. Gradual commercial control by the British and discovery of gold and diamonds, among other things, served to create hostility between the Boers and the British, resulting in the South African War, or Boer War, from 1899 to 1902. The Boers initially outnumbered the British and were well equipped, scoring impressive victories in the areas adjacent to their territories. Even though the Boer armies finally surrendered, apparent victory for the British was retarded by extensive and coordinated guerrilla warfare. The war was finally ended by the systematic destruction of the Boer guerrilla units, and hostilities were terminated by the Treaty of Vereniging in May 1902. The Boer territories were annexed by Great Britain and were organized into the Union of South Africa eight years later. Duffer's Drift and the War on Terror by Zachary Willey When I was a young Army captain and assistant professor at the United States Military Academy, I came across Duffer's Drift lying on a random bookcase in our offices. I remember picking it up, flipping through the pages, and wondering at what kind of curiosity I had stumbled across. I remember reading about the adventures and subsequent demises of Lieutenant Backsight Forethought and how eerily similar it sounded to my own adventures as a lieutenant, without all of the recurring deaths, of course. War is timeless. We come to the battlefield with new equipment and weapons, but the same human nature. In my decade-plus in the Army, and more years to come, 
I have found that our nature in war is to become complacent and overconfident. War is a dull bore punctuated by moments of intense conflict and emotions. It's during the lulls that we begin to believe that what we're doing is good enough and that our enemy is not as capable as we once thought. Then, inevitably, we suffer a loss, whip ourselves back into the shape and state we should have been in, and perform better. For a time. I've spent the majority of my career training soldiers, cadets, and other leaders to master their profession of combat during a time that we collectively call the War on Terror. Starting with the fall of our towers and the tragic loss we all felt, the War on Terror has spanned nearly twenty years and has several conflicts across the planet. In the military, we are guilty of looking at these conflicts as counterinsurgency fights. Then we excuse ourselves for neglecting our doctrine and basic warfighting principles as if they don't apply anymore. I saw this tendency over and over again in training, and I have yet to master a way to break the mindset. To be completely honest, one of the best ways I've found is to make others read Duffer's Drift. There is something about this tale that terrifies us. Though we read about BF far away in South Africa, we can't help picturing ourselves in places more familiar. I'm transported to Shere Khan, Afghanistan, where as a young lieutenant I supervised the construction of an outpost on a remote and dusty hilltop on the Kajikistan border. Had I been attacked like Lieutenant B.F., would I have survived? After reading Duffer's Drift, I must honestly answer no. I likely would have suffered the same fate as the heroes of our story. I encourage you to take this tale to heart. Even if you have yet to see combat, do your best to picture yourself in the most dire of circumstances, then consider how you can apply the lessons from Lieutenant B.F. to that situation. I'm here to tell you, it could make all the difference. <laughs>